Today we will read Radha Rasa Sudhanidhi, verse 66. I apologize for my English. I have to read. I'm sorry. <laughs> but what to do? Seva is Seva. Okay, we will start. When will I have my heart's desires fulfilled? By seeing the playful enjoyment of Radha and the Prince of Raja, who are absorbed in making intimate jokes with each other as they go down the pathways of the towns or villages of Raja. Their sudden manifestation of adolescence in childhood steals the heart of the fortunate souls. Mm -hmm. I will read again the words. There's a lot of subtle meanings and we will try to enter in relishing the words of our Acharyas. When will I have my heart's desires fulfilled? By seeing the playful enjoyment of Radha and the Prince of Raja, who are absorbed in making intimate jokes with each other as they go down the pathways of villages of Raja. Their sudden manifestation of adolescence in childhood steals the hearts of the fortunate souls. Maybe we can just stop here and to give just short introduction and everyone is very welcome to share also. So we can see here Prabhupada Saraswati is praying very spontaneously. His prayer is always spontaneous because the love for Yuga Lakishore is also spontaneous. And we can see the words of Acharyas <clears throat> are full of bhava, prema, and all other levels of their pure love. So, very often is written and it's said in the scriptures, and the pure devotees are also saying the same thing, that we should very carefully Listen the words of Acharyas. Because their pure emotions from their heart, their bhava is coming in the form of words. And in one sense, there is no difference between the words and feelings of Acharyas. This is why all these words are so potent, so powerful. For us sadakas, but also when acharyas are exchanging their words between each other, they are giving so much immerse pleasure to each other because they are through words, they are exchanging their pure feelings. And we can see here 
that also audience is very important. Sensitive devotees are expressing their sensitive words and feelings and then sensitive audience is scratching them, inspiring them to reveal more and more and more. Then this is a perfect association. And if someone is so fortunate, so lucky to receive this sound vibration through this emotional exchange of audience and rasic devotees, sensitive, both sides are very sensitive, then sadaka is in bliss. He is harvesting biggest fortune biggest luck which is not possible to describe so audience is also very important and audience means devotees and devotees also have to practice through their listen listening process of listening how to become sensitive because in that way they will receive so much from rasic sensitive devotees, but also they will give them, they will serve them with their open hearts. And in that way, exchange starts. And this exchange is so blissful. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, with his associates, showed us how it is very important to properly listen with rasic ears the words of rasic devotees so in one sense he was audience and his devotees was speakers or readers and in some time he became speaker but his devotees was dr were drinking what he was talking about. And this, Prabhupada Saraswati, in these words, is trying to express his feelings. And for Sadaka, for us beginners, neophytes, is very important that we just try to catch his feelings and his words. Look at this first word. He is saying, when will I have my heart's desires fulfilled? When, he is saying. Here in Sanskrit, it's written kada. It's very interesting that in Croatian language, we are also saying kada, when. So for us it's very easy. But in this kada, or when, when Prabhupada Ananda Saraswati is speaking, he implements, infuses these words with all his hankering, all his feelings. And we can feel if we are enough sensitive, he is feeling when he say kada. It's not just a word. It's feeling expressed in the form of letters. Kada. And immediately he is putting us close to him that we can listen the resonance of his heart. And then he is continuing what really he wants. When will I have my heart's desires fulfilled? Vaya, can I say something? Yes, I'm waiting <laughs> for you. 
I think it is so, so utterly amazing when you read this verse, Kanai and I on the Mela were discussing the similar point. You know, this, when he's saying that, that first line, when will my heart, my heart's desire be fulfilled by seeing the divine couple enjoying? So alone, this, this sentence, you can, you can speak. You, this is the, the whole summary of Manjari Bath. This is, so wonderful and honestly speaking close your eyes and say it again it could also have come from raghunath das goswami it's so similar the bhav is so similar and why is that like you already said because mahaprabhu uh prabhudananda saraswati his tunga vidya but by the great autarya by the magnanimity of sri chaitanya mahaprabhu he had that same Manjari bhav in his heart when he wrote all these verses. So here in the first verse, what is our fulfillment of our heart's desire? Is to see the divine couple enjoying. And this is the whole existence of the Manjaris, that Swamini will be there and Krishna is enjoying her company. All that preparation all the seva of the kingaris only aims for this that the divine couple can enjoy each other so this is so wonderful this is just the whole philosophy of gaudiya vaishnava is in one line and how similar it is to raghunath das goswami and there we can see that all the acharyas have been so swept away by the love and by the mercy of mahaprabhu who, who gave that beautiful, beautiful Ujjwala Rasa, Swabhakti Shriyam, this beautiful, beautiful Manjari bow. So I was amazed how similar that uh, verse is. Sorry. <laughs> no, thank you very much. This word Kada is one of the most important words in so many songs, in so many. Uh, I was also speaking with Subal in this Mela about this word of Kada. And we just concluded actually how this word is so important that everything is inside of that word. And it's little, little difference between when and may. And it's including in Lila. Maybe for, in some languages, it's not a big difference. I don't know. I'm not an expert. But I know in Croatian language, and I can see here in Sanskrit also, there is little difference. When devotees say, may I do something? It means that he is directly to that person. May I put a garland, my dear Gurudev, around your neck? It means that I am already very close to you. But when I say, when I will put garland around the neck of my beloved Gurudev, it means that I'm still not so close, physical, and not in direct connection. And this slight differences are actually showing the position in that moment of sadaka who is praying to attain vision or someone who is already attained vision and he is approaching to Shrimati Radhika or beloved Ishtadev and saying, I want, may I put a sindura on your head? May I put a garland? May I make red lack? So much feeling, sir, in this Word actually. And someone wants to share something more, otherwise, we can continue. All right. So, where will I have my heart's desires fulfilled by seeing? the playful enjoyment of Radha and Prince of Raj who are absorbed in making intimate jokes with each other. 
as they go down the pathways of villages of Raja. Their sudden manifestation of adolescence in childhood steals the hearts of fortunate souls. Now we will read Baba's commentary. Now, Srimati and her girlfriends are staying in Varshana. Her parental home for a while. This is a very happy time for them. For there is a less control over them here as they are in Yavat. The abode of Radha's mother-in-law. In Varshan, it is easier for Radhika to meet Mohan and to enjoy pastimes with him. Everybody experiences Krishna in his own way, but nobody can see him in all his aspects. So here, Baba is very nicely explaining what is behind the words, which kind of lila is behind of words. And he explained this situation when Radha and Mohan are together in Barshana. So this Paraki above, which is going in Yavat, is very relishable in one way. But the same Paraki above, when it's relished in Varshane, it's also relishable, very much relishable in another way. And Radha Mohan are so expert in their exchange with the help of Yoga Mai that they can play, they can exchange, even they age, they can change even that age according to the place and circumstances. This is very mystic. It looks like human, but in the same time it's not a human because Yoga Maya is doing all these arrangements in Lila Shakti according to their desires. So when Radhika is in Yavat, there is more obstacles for meeting Mohan, her beloved. But when she is in the home of parents, like every girl, she is completely relaxed. And all her sakis and manjaris are also receiving her relaxed mood. Everyone is so relaxed. And this is very natural. And automatically, Mohan is also rela relaxed. When he is approaching Varshana, and when he has desire to meet Radhika, and they are very, very relaxed, both of them, because obstacles are not so strong. Gurudev, do you want to enlighten us a little bit about this? Very good, very good, Lord. I am so much gratitude. And sometimes, Talan Baba, it's so gratitude. Thank you. Go on. Hmm. I'm sorry. We are talking only with what we learned from you yes baba and 
everything what we say which is coming over my ability it's only your Kripa Gurudev it's it's about my uh, any abilities I think Paya, this is this is a very 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 deep and very like you said very mystical point that um, you know many many times I have been approached you know Radha and Krishna are always 14 and, and then always Kishori and Kishori age but honestly the erotic pastimes, Yoga Maya is doing something very mystical because then people say, how can they have erotic pastimes at the age of 14? And sometimes the Vaishnavas get criticized. But this is not the point because Yoga Maya, she, do, she is doing this wonderful seva that adolescents can appear whenever in this erotic Nikunja Leelas where the Manjaris are the only ones who can take part. So... This is a very deep point and a very deep subject matter to meditate on that actually this is not a static thing. And like we, like we discussed on the Premala, this time and place and circumstances with our conditioned material in mind, we cannot really understand this, how this is happening. So Yoga Maya is doing things which are impossible and she is making it possible. So that these very beautiful and very intimate amorous pastimes can take place. So this is a very, very deep matter. And only the Manjaris, they have access to witness these pastimes. So here, Prabhu Nanda Sala. So I think Baba will also go more in detail, I think. So about this adolescence and childhood, this is very, indeed, very, very mystical and eye-opening for those who have no understanding about Madhurya Rasa. Yes, Tarun Ji. Now Baba will try to explain us how to enter in this undescribable mystic of their loving pastimes. And he is starting. Everybody experiences Krishna in his own way. But nobody can see him in all his aspects. For the older women of Gokula, he is like a small child. For Putana and other demons, he is all devouring, uh, destroying, all destroying time. For his mother, he is her child and for the young girls of Raja he is the most romantic lover so we can see here how according to Bhava according to their staiba and intensity of love and the way of love Devotees are seeing Krishna. And we can see how this is so personal that each devotee, according to his love, is looking at his Ishtadev and serving his Ishtadev according to that love and mood of his relationship. And Baba is now, is going on and explaining why it's like that. And he is using the word God. God is aggregate of four rasas. And everyone has a rasa with him according to one's individual mood. And if you remember, Rupa Goswami is writing in the beginning of Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, Akila Rasamrita Sindhu, uh, Akila, yeah, Rasamrita Murti, sorry. Saying actually that Krishna is that reservoir who can fulfill all desires, loving desires of his loving devotees. 
he is that one. Not his devotees, but his reciprocate to his devotees according to their loving mood. But the beautiful last line of this verse is Radha Priya Vidur Jayati. Why he ha can do this? Because he is darling of my beloved Radhika. He is aggregate, but who is feeling, infusing this aggregate with emotions? My beloved Radhika. And this is the mood of those devotees who are more on pro Radhika, on Radhika's side, Radha Disnika. So they see Krishna so victorious and so able to reciprocate to all other rasas because he is Radha Priya. He is darling, sweetheart of my Shimataratara. But it's very important that because Baba is giving here again that everyone according to his desire and mood is looking and have relationship and serving Krishna or his beloved Ishtadev. Yes, I want to say something. I just remember. Prabhupada is writing in his commentary of Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, Nectar, Nectar of Devotion. He is writing that each devotee in his stai bhav is completely happy, satisfied, and to serve his Ishtadev. And one more thing. He thinks, he is very convinced that his bhava is the best bhava. And Prabhupada is explaining why. Because this is the way how one can give his full capacity in devotional service. I remember I read it a long time ago. And I never forget it. Many th things I forgot it, but actually I didn't forget that. That each devotee is so proud that he thinks my bhav is the best bhava. And in that way, he is giving completely himself. This is pure devotional service. So when you speak with someone who is maybe in another bhav than you are, and he is really in stai bhav, you can feel it. Because he is so enthusiastically speaking, glorifying his ishtadev, and you feel just expression of his love. And there is no quarrel, actually between such kind of personalities, even if they have <laughs> different bowels. I remember every one of us has uh, experience when we are talking with Hanumanji, our dear Hanumanji. He is so fixed in, in his Ram Kata, in Hanuman Kata, you know, and you are su si simply surprised. And he is very captivated. Because love towards his own Ishtadev is so strong that he is teaching us how should I love my own Ishtadev. Only the people who are quarreling are those who are not in love, actually. You know, Bhakti Vinod Thakur, he said, we should never ever criticize anyone who is worshipping God, Allah, Jesus, and all these things. But you should always see the sincerity, and you should think that, wow, 
like would i how can i be so sincere like the one who is doing this this uh, worship so then there can never be any quarrel if you see only the sincerity and how i can become more sincere i like this very much i don't know i think it's in harinam chintamani or something like that where bhakti Thakur is saying this or in his uh, 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 there is also one book i think where he's giving instructions Bhakti Rahas. I, I'm not quite sure where this quote is, but I love it so much that we could, like you just said, we should never take, oh, look, he is worshipping Allah, he is worshipping Hanuman, he is worshipping Shiva, he is worshipping Ganesh. We should, we should take the sincerity and implement it in our own bhakti and fortify ourselves and not look at others and criticize. It's a very wonderful point. We can see in Srimad Bhagavatam. We were reading Srimad Bhagavatam. And one most important thing in Srimad Bhagavatam, that each devotee which is mentioned in different chapters, has his own loving relationship with Ishtadev. Bhishma, he has his own loving relationship. Kunti, she has her own loving, and they are completely one-pointed to that loving relationship. They are coming together, they are living together, but each of them is completely fixed in his own love and relationship. And for me, this is the reason why Srimad Bhagavatam is also so important to show us that we also should define our own Ishtadev, like all these great, 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 great sublime Mahajans did. And ultimately, Tan Kanto is coming, explaining Raja, and then Different scriptures are explaining behind these confidential pastimes. So this my expression of this when I remember all these Lilas from Srimad Bhagavatam, which I forgot it, so many of them, even the names, but th this is the main point. And then remember Chaitanya Charitamrita, which is said. That Sambada, Abhideya, and Prayojana are the three subjects, main subjects, main essence of the Srimad Bhagavad. And everything else, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu say, is Maya. Sambada, Abhideya, Prayojana, Maya. <laughs> and if we understand properly, then we for sure agree with this statement of Mahaprabhu. Now, Baba is quoting Srimad Bhagavatam. Shukamuni describes in Srimad Bhagavatam 10, 43, 17, how Krishna entered the arena of King Kamsa as follows. O king, when Krishna entered the arena with his elder brother Balaram, he looked like a thunderbolt to the wrestlers present there. All fighters, all wrestlers saw Krishna like a thunderbolt. They didn't see sweetness, beauty, or other opulences of Bhagavan, but they saw him like a thunderbolt because they have to fight <laughs> at him. People in general saw him as the best of the men. The young girls saw him as a cupid. Cowards saw him as one of their own people. 
the wicked kings saw him as a chastiser. His parents saw him as their child. The king Kamsa saw him as a death personified. Ignorant people taught him to be an ordinary human child. The mystics saw him as the supreme truth. And the members of Yadu dynasty saw him as the supreme Godhead. So what should we learn from this words? That according to the stage of consciousness, according to the stage of heart and love, all present people, all present personalities in this arena, they had their own perspective on Krishna. And they were very mixed. Vaikuntha Bhaktas, Raja Bhaktas, some wrestlers, general people, ignorant people. This is different, different stages of consciousness. And consciousness brings them specific perception of Krishna. Consciousness. We can thank you so much for this for this first. We can also understand what you're saying as a consequence of the miracle of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Why? Because Part of the message of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is that God is not a substance, God is not a book. There are no Ten Commandments. There's no book in our path. The highest form of divine experience is loving. So when he writes, Baba writes, or it's not Baba, it's in the citation you just read, God is the aggregate of all mellows. The highest experience of God is to find a pure mellow, to find a pure mood, a, a pure loving relation. There's no doctrine to learn, there's no ideology to adopt. Our practice is to come into a mood of pure loving devotion, and then we've arrived. And this, in a way, is what Mahaprabhu brings to us. The, the idea that Krishna is not some fixed idea of love, but an active, loving lila, on constantly ongoing. This is what God is to be understood as. Thank you. It's so nice. Raso Vaisaha or Akila Rasamrita Murti. So, he is reciprocate to everyone according to his desire or his love. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, yeah, so beautifully you mentioned, also, especially in the beginning of his lilas, he has also different relationships with different devotees. And it was very nicely in the house of Srivas Thakur, not Srivas, Srivas Thakur, how he exchanged this different intimate relationship with his different devotees. And then when he moved from Navadvip, he completely took the mood in Puri of Radha Das Bhava, Madanakya Mahabhava, mood of greatest separation 
which Radhika is feeling, and also the mood of Manjuri. Tarunji, also, also this uh, this verse from the Bhagavatam, Baba is quoting. He is quoting it also to strengthen our hope and our nishta that we have something really which was never which was never there. You know, all those people he saw them, whatever stai bhav they had as death, as a fighter, as a relative. But we should be aware that Mahaprabhu came and gave us something even more, more, more valuable than those sitting in this arena. Not that we are better than them, but the point I want to do, make is that Mahaprabhu gave us, we are, we are not Nidya Siddhas, we are not with, with Radha and Krishna in this arena, but he gave to us living entities, to the Jivas, the highest achievable goal, the highest achievable stai bhav in Manjari bhav. So this is so wonderful that we still have this uh, thankfulness and this gratitude that we can develop this Manjari bhav. And many, many people sitting in, the, I can just imagine many people sitting in this arena, like Baba said, before nobody can comprehend the Krishna in all his fa facets, except Swamini, of course except Swamini, uh, because she has Madanakya Mahabhav, she has the full and utmost understanding and utmost highest love of Krishna. And we as Manjuris, as Tadatmya, we are so close to Swamini that we can experience some of that Madanakya Mahabhav, which in that arena only maybe, if, if Manjari was present, we don't know, but this is a very high, high gift. Mahaprabhu gave us. So uh, this is also for me personally, when I read this verse, it's such a wonderful uh, 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 trigger to, to my gratitude that we received something really special. Radhe. Thank you. Radhe, Radhe. Daun Baba. Karanda and everyone. Dandavats. So we received something very special. But then why won't we share it more? That is my question. I'm, li I'm just a little bit... Uh, <laughs> I was just... When I listened to this, and I, I, I think that it's a, it's a big liberation for any human being to realize that God is not this bad or, or punishing person or this, you know, whoever we thought he was, but he is reciprocating. and. Now we have the chance to directly serve his beloved. And why not we share it more? I just say this to myself also. Mm, because uh, our pray mail, I was so nectarian. And, um, and then I thought, my God, we are, you know, in a way, uh, I feel younger, but my body is getting older. So time is short somehow. And Gurudev also expressed the desire that we have to multiply. So I just want to give this small, um, uh, how do you say, impulse of my heart. I also ask myself, you know, I'm quite complacent with my situation. I am feeling uh, satisfied in many ways, but of course I shouldn't. Because this is such a great gift, because we have to distribute a gift also. I speak with some devotees and I said, to, how can we multiply? How can we make this mela bigger? And then many say, oh, no, no, don't. Because I am happy just to be with the people that I know. <laughs> and I thought, no, I'm not so happy. Because uh, I want also new people to have the chance to get this gift, to be liberated from any, um, how do you say that? you know, a box of their relation to the divine. Because actually that relationship is so, you know, it's so inviting and it's so making everything possible. And especially now by the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, what you also mentioned, Uddhava Prabhuji, I'm so happy to listen to you again after a long time. <laughs> and uh, isn't it amazing? And can we not also share it more in a way that others can also have their sweet relationship to our Swamini and that this chance, we often speak about it, no? we say, 
yes, uh, it's now possible for everyone and every rasa is possible. But why not we share it more? That is my question only, just to give a little bit pinching. <laughs> I also try to pinch myself because it is such a big, big, big gift. And, uh, and uh, yeah, I, I just would like, love to share it more and, and expand our, our happiness and our service uh, possibilities with also people who are ready for this. Because that is always something that I have asked myself. It is so great. It is so astonishing. It is always inspiring. But how we can uh, put this together, the, the Sankatan movement and this Raganuga Bhakti, that it becomes, um, how do you say that, possible to share it more. Radhe Radhe, sorry. I think that is a very nice idea, beautiful idea. And I think the principle in the material world is if many people think about something, it will come about. So thank you, Suniti. I was also thinking that when we traveled home together and next day and, you know, the association of the, of the Vaishnavas is something so precious. So if everyone is meditating about making this more often is my first impulse, we should do this not only once a year, which is quite ridiculous in my humble opinion, but it is also not easy to find locations. But if everyone is thinking, you know, there are so many people sitting down sometimes. I know the, the Bruno Gröning people, they sit down in the morning at nine o'clock and everybody is focusing on the, on the healing powers, for example. So if every one of us thinks about how to make this not only one small house mela, which is beautiful, but again, come in these times of, of, of dole, where, where like 100, 200, that would be possible. I think the, the, the stone now is enrolling, so to say, you, you kick the stone. So if everybody is meditating on how to do this, I think by the power of all the Vaishnavas present and will we listen to this uh, online, if everyone thinks his, his part, I think maybe Swamini will help to, to manifest something like that. That would be also very, very beautiful because there is no doubt, first of all, it is for our benefit exceptional to to be together with like-minded and then the second point you are doing how to invite more who can benefit from this they will come if their heart's desire is like that we know that if we are attractive they will come so this is a good point of meditation that we can enlarge this this project of of, of spreading the movement of Mahaprabhu but also both should be there to fix it and to spread it. So this can happen. Every We were so many times talking about Dole on the Bremela and Schweibenalp and all these things. So this is not a, this is not a utop utopia. This is not an utopian goal. It can manifest as easily as it was there if, if many people think about it. So thank you. This was also what I was thinking that we should, should be more together. Zoom is fine, but real association is finer. <laughs> I hope. And it was also actually Gurudev who was uh, inspiring this. He was saying that, wow, you know, that's nice that you meet, but I want uh, more. And then I thought, oh, my God, I, I have become so lazy. And Gurudev always stirs it up again. Then I feel that your desires, Gurudev, they have to become my desires because that is uh, the only way how to improve my you know fallen condition to make you happy and then i know swamini will be happy radha mohan will be happy and in general many will be happy that they have the chance to connect with this beautiful beautiful unlimited you know beauty of shrimati radhika and mohan and all different rasas that are possible by the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, but especially now, of course, that maid servant uh, hood and has so many beauties that actually, whether they know it or not, the people of the Kali Yuga, they are ready for it. <laughs> yeah, they
audience audience different audience and Baba is continuing Lord Shri Krishna is aggregate of all transcendental mellows like erotic mellow and everyone sees him according to his own mood This aggregate of flavors is not seen by everyone's eyes. It's not that everyone is Sajatya Sangha. Different people, different devotees have different eyes or consciousness or feelings through which they are looking. And if they are in Staiba, then it's perfectly all right. But if the different consciousness, eyes and feelings are from materialistic body, they should endeavor a little bit more to come on a spiritual level, on the level of their Staiba. And this aggregate of flavors is not seen by everyone's eyes. Therefore, when the older women of Raja, who have feelings of motherly love, see Radha and Mohan playing on the pathways of Raja, They think them to be a small boy and a small girl. Therefore, when the older women of Raja, who have feelings of motherly love, see Radha and Mohan playing, on the pathways of Raja, they think them to be a small boy and a small girl. Enchanted by their sweet forms, they will say, Aha, blessed is the Creator who has made such a beautiful boy and girl. Not only did he create them, but he also showed them to the people of the world. Oh, this is the motherly love. Motherly love doesn't have a project. Motherly love has only her stiba emotion. Motherly love doesn't need philosophy. Motherly love doesn't need logic, shastras. They see always through the eyes and heart of mothers. And real sensitive devotees will try to relish this and also to implement in their own life. Someone who feels attraction or vatsalya or motherly love, his practice should be like this which is described here. And when he is fully condensed with that, then automatically Rasa from his heart will contagiously spread all over the round, the world, everywhere. So we should spread different kinds of things, philosophy, different projects, but to spread love, pure love, 
it requires that we have to be filled with that love. And in that way, everyone can have some benefit. So mothers from Vraja, they always see Radha and Mohan like a small boy and girl. And we should be aware. I know this is not our Baba, but Baba is speaking. How it is important to understand how our bow is very important for us. And in which way to look through this Sadaka wish and also Swarup. They simply saw Radha Mohan like a small boy and small girl. Mothers. They see everyone like their own child. Gurudev so many times told us. Mothers, fathers, they always see each other, uh, all others, sorry, like children. You can see mother who has 80, 90 years is going with his son or daughter who has 60. And she is always thinking on him like my boy or my like my girl. Even in material world, because this is a reflection of supreme love. And if we really want to do something in our life, first thing we should melt the heart. When heart is sufficiently melt out of love, then love will guide us and bring us where she wants, not where we want. She will guide us. And we have here perfect examples. Through the Vatsalya Rasa, What does it mean to be Raga Bhakti? To have burning thirst for Ishtadi. Burning thirst, great, intense thirst for Ishtadi. Not for our satisfaction. Thirst to give him pleasure. And this is Raga Bhakti, as I understood. Rupa Goswami and all others, Raghunath, their thirst for Radhika was, and Yuga Lakishore also, was so intense when Rupa was praying to Radha Mohan or Yuga Lakishore. He put the finger between his mouth, between his, between his teeth. And he was dipping so deeply and at the same time crying for Radhika. Why he was putting this finger between the teeth? Because he didn't want that anyone else see him or hear his pitiful crying. We should feel his feelings. And at the same time, he was hardly, hardly, hardly breathing. So meditation on his state of love Emotions is the best sadhana for us beginners, not other things. Then relishing will start to go deeper and deeper in our heart, not in the mind. Heart wants to relish, 
mind wants different things. Like in mountains. We jump on one peak, then go in another down. Then another peak, another down. Then another peak, and another down. No, this is not the heart's desire. This is the mind's desire. Heart's desire is to go deep in the ocean, in the lake. Not jumping on the tops of the mountains, of different. This is mind's desire. One thing, Goranga, one thing come to my mind again for what Sunidi said. I'm, th I'm still thinking about these things because it's so precious. Um, one, one thing also that every sadhaka should also s desire and strive to have association with those who are more advanced. So I was, I was just thinking that that would also be nice to meditate upon, that we could have someone in our midst who is more advanced than me, who is more advanced than us. And uh, what came to mind was when you just said, Goranga Sunda, that, you know, what means Raga Bhakti? What means Raga? And Srila Jiva Goswami is uh, writing something very wonderfully, a very wonderful example, that actually the heart, Baba is writing this, and think, I think in Raga Bhatmachandika, the heart of the Sadaka, of the Raganuga Sadaka, the heart is like a crystal which which can take the shining of those of those hearts who are purified, who are pure Vaishnavas. Their shining can enter into our heart and make our hearts crystal clear. So this is the way of Raga Bhakti. This said this is Raga is a music, Raga is a feeling, but Raga is also the rays, uh, the other leg like of the sun. So this rays of those who have a pure heart, like Sadhu Maharaj, like Baba, like Narayan Maharaj, like Prabhupada. So those people, they can shine with their heart into our hearts. So this is the beauty of Raga Bhakti. It is not like Sabunai Koi, we cannot do anything. We can clean our heart. It's like shrubbing a crystal so that these rays of of the of the ragas of the ragatmikas and the and the, and the perfect souls they can enter into our heart like like a crystal so this is also one thing we can meditate that there are people like that in the midst of us and who can also because then it's also very easy like Sumiti said that the new ones that uh, those who are very interested in in that process we all can shine every one of you here shines so if that's an if so, uh, so many rays are together in one place, they can enter into many, many hearts. And if there is one, two, three more advanced than us, than me, then, you know, that would be also very wonderful because those persons, they, they have no problems entering the heart of everyone. Like we see in Sadhu Maharaj, Gurudev's, when, when, when I met Baba, when we all met Narayan Maharaj. So those rays, they can enter into our hearts. The Bhakti Lada Beach is already there. It only needs this cooling rays of the hearts of those who have realized the truth and the truth about Raganuga Bhakti. So our hearts must have this capacity to, to have to, to let this rays enter. And that is also one thing I, I pray for now that we can have again like like a place uh, one two three times a year where this can happen jai radhe jai radhe okay i will continue the, the sweetness of radhika and madhava illuminates the pathways of arshana and the villagers are enchanted when they see how sweet this couple is. This form steals the minds of the fortunate souls. Punyatma. This form steals the minds of the fortunate souls, Punya Atma. This Punya 
और सुकृत थे डज इट मीन रिजल्ट ऑफ परफॉर्मिंग मंद एन फायस फ्रूटिव एक्टिविटीज but the mercy of the god real punya real sukriti is coming from the kripa of ishtade and also from the kripa of vaishnavas and this is real sukriti real punya which is giving big impressions in the heart no amount of pious work can guarantee a person the sweet vision of radhika and mohan only pure devotion can Shila Jiva Goswami writes in his commentary on Bhagavatam 10:12:10 10. The words of covered boys performed many pious activities to get Krishna as their friend is only a popular saying Listen to it for The words of the cover boys performed many pious activities to get Krishna as their friend is only a popular saying Many statements are popular sayings and we are taking it like grant because we need spiritual attend intelligence to discriminate what is popular saying for the benefit of the people and what is real meaning of the behind the words of acharyas behind the words of gurus what is the real meaning not what we are hearing outside but what he really means and it requires strong connection to the hearts to really understand what person think because sometimes his, his words can be opposite of his feelings but we should be enough sensitive to catch this wave of his real feelings thinking not only literally words the words of cover boys performed many pious activities to get krishna as their friend is only a popular saying actually that punya consists only of the greatest mercy of the god greatest mercy of the god full complete greatest kripa which brings devotee to the greatest most confidential pastimes this is real direct loving relationship is a real real kripa or punya what is said sometimes maybe we can say with this and that and this and that and that and that i can earn some punya some sukriti and it's very beneficial but we should know what is real punya and for that we have to hanker for that kind of punya the word punya according to amara kosh um, dictionary 
also means beautiful. The fortunate souls mentioned are also the eternal associates of Radha and Moha. Real punya, pure punya, pure sukriti is present in the eternal associates of Radha and Moha. And we need their kripa to receive at least the drops of their sukri, their punya, which is most beautiful thing which every jiva can receive. Please, Tarun Baba. This is actually the. This is actually what Gurudev is always saying. Therefore, we need a proper parampara. That from the, like like he's always said, the spiritual process is not an inductive one, going from down to up and up and up with our mind and exploring the universe. But it's completely the other way around. It's a deductive way. It comes from above straight into our hearts, and so that we can receive this pure punya, like you said, from the nitya siddhas or from those who already have that in their hearts, like Gurudev, like Baba, like the Mahajans, the Acharyas. So we need the proper connection to a, a parampara, which, which is unbroken and which goes back to Mahaprabhu, so that this fruit, which is passed down from Radha and Krishna to, over Mahaprabhu, over the Acharyas, so that we can have the same fruit in our hands, un, unchanged, unaltered, and this is the pure punya, and the pure punya for this age is Ujjwala Rasa Swabhakti Sriyam. This is the highest, the highest pure punya which we can receive through our Gurudev. And I was just reading yesterday, I, I, uh, Brema Bhakti Chandrika, Sri Guru, uh, Guru Mukha Padma Vakya Aina Kori Aya. So make the words. I, I was I was reading five, six times after, after, after. Make Baba is very strong in this. Make the words of Sri Gurudev your own in your heart. Don't don't think or listen to anything else. So this is what makes us this is what makes us qualified for receiving this pure punya that we do this. Guru Mukha Padma Bhakya. What Baba, what Gurudev is saying, this should be. The only thing in our heart, we should not listen to many, many places, uh, many, many scriptures, many, many this, many, many that. So what our Gurudev is saying, Guru Mukha Padma Vakya Arna Koryo, this is what, what we need as the essence straight into our heart. And when we do this every day, it's a beautiful thing. So this is what we should hanker after. Yes, Baba. Yes, Tarunji. This is real punya, and this is difference. But hanker after a realization of this, I think. What I mean by that is, yes, we can only receive this through parampara, through guru, kripa, but it's not a question of going to the guru shop and picking out a guru or going to the uh, Amazon category for parampara and uh, clicking on a parampara, this, this guru is already in our heart. My experience of, of, of our Gurudev is that he's always been in my life. And by life, I mean the life of my soul for a, a million years. And it's only in this birth by fortune, good fortune, and good association that I was able to realize this, to understand this, that he's always been my guru. So I think everything you say, I, I followed Tarun Baba, but, but we must not think that we need to look outside ourselves to find our parampara, we need to look inside ourselves to find it, to meditate, to, to focus, and and to find our relation to our Guru who's in our heart already, living there forever, and to find this uh, and, and uh, nurture this relationship, that's our path.
not to not to go uh, shopping for guru we had we had on the mela if i may say we had a, i had a very wonderful talk with kalindi mama Madaji, and she is she is she we were talking about exactly this point so first of all with our wonderful wonderful sharing because it is said you know janme janme prabhu say it's uh, the guru and disciple principle is an eternal one so we don't know how many times we met baba how many times we met gurudev you know we don't know this so it is it, it is really like you said an eternal principle and in the scriptures in Guru Tattva Vigyan from my Guru Dev Baba is saying the Guru appears then when the mercy is most needed. He is the incarnation of the cloud bank, the Madhurya Kadambini, cloud bank of mercy. And when this mercy is concentrated most, it will appear in front of our eyes. So Guru Dev is this in incarnation of Krishna, this most merciful incarnation, this most merciful principle which can bring us back to, uh, not back, but to, to Radha and Krishna. And it is said that Janme Janme Prabhu say, this principle is eternal. So Kalindi was asking, yeah, but, but how, how, do we, how do we get steered to the right sky above? You know, we millions of lifetimes. So how can we come into contact with Manjari Bhav? And then uh, it's very helpful that the Acharyas, Shiva Goswami has really elaborated upon that point very much. And Vishwana Chakravadi part, he picks it up in, in Madhurya Kandambini and in, especially in Raghavat Machandrika, where this question is asked. So how can we say that, how can we come into this direction? How do we do this? And it's said that there are two ways that we, we come into contact like with Sadhu Maharaj, with Anandadas Babaji Maharaj, with Prabhupada, with Narayan Maharaj. They are all, all Guru Shakti. They are all empower, empowered souls of one Guru. This is Krishna in our heart, the Samashti Guru. And so, so it is said there that there are two ways we can put in the right direction. First of all is pure mercy, which is very rare. And the second point is that after many, many lifetimes, we make many, many sadhanas and we have so much samskaras impressions into our heart that those will prevail. So at one point, it may be we have been Rambaktas or we have been Vatsalya Bhav, but at one point we came into contact with someone who is practicing Manjari Bhav and, and this was then the moment. We cannot say when, you know, but this was the moment when everything fructified and when it became condensed. So... The samskaras are very important. Shiva Goswami is saying that, that uh, we, we follow this direct path. One time I was at Radha Kund and I saw Vaishnava Pad Das Babaji Maharaj. He was taking bath in Radha Kund and I was shocked to see him openly there because he usually is hiding it's early in the morning and he came out of the water and I was thinking, my God, what a effulgent person. So I was asking him, can you explain, can you say something? I, I didn't want to be like an idiot saying nothing. I asked him, can you say something about Guru Tattva? And he was saying, Guru Tattva is one. There is one sun and so many windows. And the sun is coming through all the windows. So he was making the point that there is one Guru. This is Krishna, the Chaitya Guru. And so many, so many different Gurus are there we can contact. So like a window lets in the rays of the sun, every guru lets in the rays of Krishna and Radha. So we are always connected with that guru tattva. And sometimes it's, it's manifested in this person and that person, but we are always connected to our guru Dev eternally. We don't know in which, even in which universe we don't know. So this principle of like Baba is saying, Janme Janme Brabu say, this principle of guru and disciple is an eternal one. And we should always keep this in mind that not, this was not only maybe one lifetime that we met him, like you said. We all feel that we met him many, many times and there's a strong relationship. And this is very, very beautiful because it also, as the, the next thing is, it will never be lost. Uh, now it's coming one very nice paragraph which Baba is writing. 
Although the fortunate villagers of Raja can see Radha and Mohan playing as a children, the Sakis and Manjaris see them in their full glory of adolescence. If you remember, if you, in the beginning of the commentary, Baba says, everybody experienced Krishna in his own way, but nobody can see him in all his aspects. And now he's telling another thing. Who really can see Krishna in all aspects? Although the fortunate villagers of Raja can see Radha and Mohan playing as a children, Sakis and Manjaris see them in their full glory of adolescence. And where is this floor full glory manifesting? In Nivriti Nikuncha. So Manjaris can, Kinkaris can see the full glory of Radha Mohan in their confidential moments. When they are in the peak of their adolescence age and no one else. This is the beauty. This is the punya for very, 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 very rare souls. Shripad, in his kinkari form, also witnesses these pastimes and desires to arrange for their secret meeting somehow on the pretext of playing games, she takes Srimati to a garden on the outskirts of Varshana and gives a hint with her eyes to Mohan also to come there. Who else can be so expert in service? The maid servants are only interested in Radhika's happiness. An aspirant should not try to remember these sweet pastimes just to please his own mind. And this is the greatest sadhana. To not practice bhajan to please my mind, my senses, that I become peaceful, cool. Aspirants should not try to remember these sweet pastimes just to please his own mind. For there is not a whiff of personal desire in the hearts of people of Raja. And as long as there is even the subtle personal desire within the heart, one cannot become Rajavasi. One should do a bhajana following the footsteps of gopis of Raja. Only by mercy, only by mercy, from above, one can become free from all personal desires. How someone who is conditioned with his personal desires can free himself of personal desires? It's not possible. But he has to desire, strong desire, to be free from his desires. 
and begging and crying for Kripa. Because he knows all these desires, which I notice, and who knows how many millions of desires I have, which I don't notice at all. Are just waiting like animals to bite me suddenly. This is my obstacles. And I surrender to my Gurudev, who can very easily remove them. Not my sadhana, not my practice, but just sincere desire to be free from these desires that I can fulfill my only one desire. This is why Gurudev is always saying we should, when we read the pastimes in Radha Rasa Sudhaniti and Vilapa Kusumanjali, we should, like, like Baba just now said, therefore Gurudev and Baba are the dream team. You know, Baba just said that we should not read this for our own pleasure. But Gurudev, many, many times, he says, we should read these pastimes and imagine us being within that pastime in an active mood. So when we read, for example, Raghunadas Goswami's Vilapa Kusumanjali, which is like a manual for, for menial service to Swamini, we should not think, oh, what a nice book. I read it and read it again. But it is the, 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 uh, it is the, the challenge for our stupid mind not to, to enjoy it as a fiction, but really to read it and try to imagine us being there in that thing and, and maybe be ready to get an order or maybe doing the same thing. So we should do this in an active mode, not in a passive mode, just like, you know, watching a movie. That is the wrong attitude. So we can read this, this Krantas with the Leelas with two ways. One is uh, the active mode that we learn and we, we are involved. And two, we are passive and watching as an enjoyment. And here, Baba is strongly condemning the latter point. So we should always imagine us being there under the Anukatya of Guru Manjari. Baba is giving here perfect instruction how to practice bhajan and be aware of difficulties, dangerous moments in the bhajan. So this is our focus, not other projects. This is our main focus. One should do bhajan following the footstep of, footsteps of the gopis of Raja. And only by mercy from above, one can become free from all personal desires. After the divine couple have met in the garden, they become absorbed in laughing and joking with each other. But meanwhile, their eyes show eagerness for romantic meeting. The maidservant sees this and covers her face with her veil, giggling and saying, Oh, Ma, what is this? How has adolescence suddenly taken place in your childlike bodies? Oh Ma, what is this? How has adolescence suddenly taken place in your child like a bodice? This is the confidential explanation of Sripat's words in the text. The maid servant remembers how the older people of Raja, out of parental love, praised the Creator for making such beautiful children. The word parihasadi in the text means joking and so on. Adi and so on and so on. Joking and so on. Loving couple exchanged. And this so on includes 
erotic meeting of divine couple. And the word rahasi, in secret, indicates that only the maid servants can witness these confidential pastimes, nobody else. They are verily sukritina, the fortunate people or persons. And this is the greatest gift of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. To make a jivas real sukritina, fortunate. And this is the chance. And now, it's a one poem which is short and it's finishing the commentary. It said, just like an ordinary boy and girl, Hari, the prince of Raja, and the youthful golden Sri Radhika play on the pathways of the beautiful villages of Raja visible to everyone. I will read once more because the second verse is very interesting. Just like an ordinary boy and girl, Hari, the prince of Raja, and the youthful golden Shiradika play on the pathways of beautiful villages of Raja, and they are visible to everyone. And second verse is going. But invisible to others, the greatest of youthful couples is engaged in laughing and joking and playing sweet, intimate games with each other. Only the confidential devotees know this. First words, explaining one mood, and in other words, explain another mood. Of loving pastimes, but also of another mood of loving devotees. Then, the playful forms of Shirada and Mohan steal all the senses and the minds of the fortunate souls as they show wonderful teenage pastimes while appearing to be in a childhood age. Sripad Prabhupada laments, Alas, when will I see the sweetness increasing on their bodies? Then I will be blessed and satisfied floating on waves of bliss. So, if you don't mind, please forgive me. I think that this commentary and words should be read and read again and again and try to digest behind and to feel what is really written and to find how it impress our hearts and of course try to beg for mercy to go deeper in the meanings of this loving tricky pastimes so i will just stop here if someone wants to add share i don't know where is it going to be maybe he's not here Yeah. Gurudev, would you be so kind to give us some of your insights? Very beautiful, very beautiful. One word has come to me. We have to become like a Sikh. Sikh means to always to learn. 
and then when we want to learn new new realizations to start coming and this is the waves of sound when we want to seek we want to be always ready to learn that is the feeling when the feeling feeling grows we want to learn every moment thank you gurudev you gave us final conclusion to meditate on that